Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for RampantDesignTools.com and today we're talking about 4K flash transitions. You've seen these effects done in reality shows, singing shows, and even feature films. And in most cases, it's an effect you think you need to go to your favorite compositing application to achieve. Not true. Ramp and Design Tools simple to use elements can be utilized right from within your Media Composer timeline, saving you time and still giving you that awesome looking flash transition. Let me show you how simple they are to use. Now before we move on, make sure you check out the link in the description section to download some select 4K flash transitions so you can follow along in this tutorial. Now before we get into Media Composer, I'm going to come to my external Mac drive here, I'm going to come down to my elements, and I'm going to come right down here to my Rampant Design 4K flash transitions. You can see that I have a whole pile of them in here and I'm just going to pick, why don't we just pick this one here. What I'm going to do is right click, I want to open this with QuickTime Player 7 and I'm just going to show this here at half size just so I can actually have it in my frame or in my screen here because I want to point out that the normal size of this file, like I said in the intro, is 4K. It's 4096 pixels wide by 2304 pixels high. Now I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well Kev, I edit Media Composer so how am I going to work with these elements? inside of my timeline, they're huge. I guess I'll have to import them and I'll have to shrink them down, but you don't actually have to do any of that, assuming you're working in a newer version of Media Composer, one that supports FrameFlex. Now, assuming it does, I'm gonna show you how you can get in and work with these in their 4K native resolution. Now, if you're working in a version previous to one that supports FrameFlex, you can simply import them and scale them down to fit in your 1920 by 1080 frame size. Okay, so let's get into Media Composer and let me show you how easy these elements are to work with. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And like I just said, if you happen to be using a version of Media Composer pre-frame flex, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna import these elements. Now, when I click on import, what we're gonna wanna do is to select one of them. Now, remember, we are dealing with 4K frame sizes. So what we wanna do is inside the options, we wanna resize the image to fit the format raster. That will take the 4K frame size and shrink it down in this case to fill a 1920 by 1080 frame size. But because I'm using version 8.1 of Media Composer, what I want to do is not import, but I want it AMA link to. So all I'm going to do is simply select AMA link to, I'm going to select all my clips, and I'm simply going to say open. You're going to see that literally in a matter of seconds, all of the 150 different 4K flash transitions are going to be linked to in this bin ready to work with. There we go. Look at that. Lightning quick. Okay, so let's create a timeline to work with. I'll just open my sequences bin here and let's get some stock footage. And why don't we just take sort of our farmer in a field working here. I'm going to drop him into sequences and we'll sort of juxtapose him against, why not, the big city of good old New York City here. And I'm going to drop that in and we're going to have our transition happen right here. So let's take our first clip. Sure, why not? Clip 150. Okay, and let's come in and let's transition. Now the great thing is, is that you'll see that we actually have a few different frames to choose from. So that one's not bad here. It fills most of the frame. I got another one right there. But why don't we sort of pick this one? What I'm going to do is mark that as an endpoint. And this frame here is what's going to trigger the transition. So what I want to do is add a new video layer by simply hitting Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y on Windows. And let's drop that in on V2. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to take this element and we want to adjust its in point way back here. Now I'm just going to get rid of sort of all the black that leads it off at the top here, which is right about there. And we'll do the same thing at the end here. Now I could have obviously done this before I dropped it into the timeline. That's okay. Cool. Okay, there we go. So now what we have is just our flash element. Now what's important to keep in mind is that this is a 4K frame size. Now how do I know that? Well, if I step into effects mode, you're going to see that I have frame flex applied here. And you can see that there's the frame that I can actually take and zoom in to different parts of this 4K frame size. Now I'm going to get back to that in just a second. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to step back out of effects mode and let's set up our transition. So to do that, we're going to assume that right now you have no third party plugins. Now I am using version 8.1 of Media Composer and what's important to keep in mind is that in pre version 8, if you purchased Media Composer or if you added the Symphony option, you had access to Avid Effects or to Boris Continuum Complete, which would make this job a one step process. And we're going to get to showing you that in just a second. But we're going to assume that with version 8.1, you don't have access to transfer modes inside a Media Composer. You have no third-party plugins whatsoever. 
You might immediately think, well, Kev, I guess I can't really use these elements. Ah, but no, it just requires a couple of extra steps. So we have our element here on video two, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this element, I'm gonna copy it into the clipboard by hitting Option C on the Mac, Alt and C on Windows. Let's create a new video layer, Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y on Windows, and we're gonna drop the same element in again. So basically what I have is I have the same element on two different video tracks. Now what we need to do is we need to step into the color correction tool. So let's do that. What I'm gonna do is head up to Windows, let's come down to Workspaces, and let's choose Color Correction. Now for our color correction, all I wanna do, believe it or not, is I'm gonna remove the saturation from this shot. Now I also wanna make sure that my white levels are up at about 100, which they are. We can bring them up just ever so slightly, not too much, you'll see that at that point it gets over 100. Now I can bring it back down, but in this case I'm just gonna clip it off right at 100. Okay. Now this frame is looking pretty white, which means that when I do a matte key, not a luma key, a matte key, that really everything is going to be keyed out here, or actually nothing is going to be keyed out, pardon me. And what's going to happen is, is that this is going to be completely filled with our flash effect. Let me show you. Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows, you'll see I'm already in the key section. There's my matte key. I'm simply going to drag it and drop it down. Now you'll see, like I had actually said, we could see the full frame, which we don't want to do. What we want to do is step into effects mode. Now my shortcut for effects mode, shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have it mapped, no problem. You can find it right here, is we want to take this key and invert it. Now you'll see that I can still see a little bit of the background in here, but that's okay. When it flashes by, you're never even going to notice it. Let's just render this out because what's important to keep in mind is I could try to play this back, but we're, all, we're dealing with 4K frame sizes here. And I am just using an iMac here, but take a look at what happens now when I play it. Boom. There's a very cool flash transition done very quick and very easily. I know you're probably thinking, well, Kev, it really can't be that easy with all these elements. You know, you sort of picked the first one. You've probably been practicing with it. We'll tell you what. Why don't I do it again here? But before I do that, because I'm happy with the way that I've set this transition up here with the matte key and the desaturate, let's save these effects, okay? I'm just gonna close the effects palette. Let's come into our effects bin, and let's simply take our matte key, and let's just put it into the effects bin, and let's come in, we're just gonna step into the effect here, and let's take the color correction effect, and let's just drag that in there as well. I'm just gonna rename that desaturate. And let's close the effects editor here. And believe it or not, I can actually remove both these clips. Okay, see you later. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Sure, 149, why not? We'll just go in order, okay? Let's find again a frame that'll be perfect for the transition. Now there's probably a few in here. That one's not bad right there, okay? Again, mark an endpoint. Now I think what I'll do at this point here is we'll just find our own out frame here, which is probably about there. Let's just make sure it doesn't do any more flashes, which it doesn't. Okay, again, we're going to that edit point. We're gonna drop this in on V2. We're just gonna back this up. Let's just come down to find our starting frame here. There we go. Perfect, okay. Again, exactly the same process I just did. We're gonna copy this to the clipboard. We're gonna drop it on V2. All I'm gonna do is take that desaturate effect, drag it and drop it down just like that. What we're gonna do now is simply take that matte key effect, drag it and drop it and take a look. Literally, once you have the effect set up, getting in and adjusting it or adding it to new clips is lightning quick. Again, all I need to do, simply render this out. Again, in a matter of seconds, it's done. I can now come back. And here we go, boom. Now, Kev, it's really not that easy, is it? Of course it is. Let's do it with the next transition. We're just gonna go in order here, nothing fancy. You'll see we got a few choices in here. I'm sure, why not that one right there? Again, coming right back in. Let's just make sure we set our out point here when it's on black. You'll see I could literally go through all of these elements exactly the same. Just basically, once I have my matte key and my desaturate set up, it's literally just a matter of dragging and dropping those effects on to achieve cool, different flash transitions every time. So again, look, the longest part of the process is probably taking it, copying it to the clipboard, dropping it on the top, taking desaturate, taking that matte key, literally rendering it out, and guess what we have now? Again, literally in a span of what, two minutes? We now have three transitions done, just like that. 
OK. Now, I did mention there might be a different way we'd want to do it if we had some third party plugins. Now, the reason I mentioned these two third party plugins is because many Media Composer editors have them in their toolkit because when they made their Media Composer 7 purchase, they either received Avid Effects or if they decided to go with the Symphony option, they received Bohr's Continuum Complete. So let me show you how simple these effects are to do with both of those effects. Okay, so since I already have one of my 4K flash transitions on my shot, why don't we just stick with the one that's there because I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna close my 4K flash transitions bin. I'm just gonna close my effects bin because I don't need that anymore and I don't need my footage either. What I'm gonna do is simply come back to my effects palette here and let's come all the way back to the top and let's talk about users of Boris Continuum Complete 8. In this case, I happen to be using 9, but the technique is going to work exactly the same with BCC8 as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate down to Key and Blend, and I'm simply going to choose the Composite effect. I'm going to drag and drop it right down here onto my 4K element, and you'll see that immediately the clip has been updated to show a transfer mode, but the question is which one. What I'm going to do is simply step into Effects mode, and you can see that inside of the Effects Editor, right down here under apply mode it's set to hard light now for me hard light is not the one that i want to use i want to use an additive transfer mode just like that so now all i have to do is simply come back now i'm going to render this again because i am dealing with a 4k frame size and i'm going to come back and simply hit play and there's another cool transition effect literally created with the drag and drop now of course if I happen to be using BCC8, all I need to do is simply take this effect, drag it in here. We call this Add Transfer Mode. And anytime I wanted to use it, what I'll do is I'll just remove it from this effect here. As I could simply just again take it, drag it and drop, you'll see it's now in the clip and it's all set to go. Okay, now how do we do the same technique using Avid Effects? Now in this case, I'm going to show you with Boris Red because Boris Red and Avid Effects are essentially the same tool. What I'm going to do, head back to the Effects palette, I'm going to come down to Boris Red for Avid, and I'm going to take the Boris Red, I can use the standard filter, the real-time one, we'll just use the real-time one again, drag and drop onto my clip, I'm going to step into Effects mode, and what I want to do is launch the user interface. Now the great thing is you don't need to know much about how Boris Red or Avid Effects works to create the same effect. All you need to remember is that you're dealing with a composite mode. So all I need to do is making sure that video one is selected, which is my 4K element. All I need to do is simply head back up to composite mode, simply choose the apply mode, switch it from normal to additive, and guess what we now have once I click apply? We have the exact same effect done using Avid Effects that we did with Boris Continuum Complete's composite filter, literally in a matter of seconds. Now there is something going on here, and I did talk a little bit earlier about how we're using 4K and we're using FrameFlex. Now where does FrameFlex come into play with sort of everything that we're talking about? Well, let me show you. You'll see that right now what's going on is that the entire frame isn't filled with the transition. I can still see a little bit of the element here. So you can see that we can actually see the cut from one to the other. So how do I eliminate that? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is let's, I'm just, again, I'm going to take this effect. We'll just drag it in here. We'll call this Add Transfer Mode. But what we'll do is we'll call this Boris Red, just so I can differentiate the two of them. I'm going to remove the effect now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in, and I'm going to adjust this frame to zoom in on it a little bit to get rid of what's going on here in the lower right and the upper left. And this is where Frame Flex comes into play. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to step into effects mode and you'll see that because this clip was AMA linked to and Media Composer knows that it's larger than my standard frame size, I can actually get in and zoom in on this frame. So what I want to do is zoom in a little bit farther. I'm just going to reposition sort of my frame down here in the lower left. Now what's important to keep in mind is that when I do this, you're going to want to watch the preview window. Because once I do it to this clip, if I was to take this clip and copy and paste it anywhere down the timeline, it's going to obviously be updated. Now what's important to keep in mind is that this technique works exactly the same with the desaturate and matte key technique. So you can get in and set your frame up exactly where you want on your 4K element, and then go in, copy and paste it onto the next layer, desaturate it, and then add the matte key. You can really get in with these 4K elements and tailor them and use them however you want. So all I'm going to do is just zoom in on my frame size a little bit here. I'm just going to reposition the frame down here to sort of the lower left hand corner and you'll see that it's updated here immediately. 
And now what's gonna happen is when I take my transfer mode and I drag and drop, you're gonna see that I still got a little bit of it here. So what I could do is just adjust it a little bit further, okay? Let's just adjust it a little bit further. And you'll see now, once I've made the adjustment, all I need to do is simply step back out of effects mode. I'm gonna give this a quick render. And all I need to do now is simply come back and hit play. And you can see that with the power of frame flex and these fantastic 4K transitions, we've now completely covered over the fact that these two shots transition between one and the other. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them up on Twitter at Rampant Design or on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rampantmedia. And don't forget, we have a whole bunch more tutorials, and you can check out our entire product line at rampantdesigntools.com.